Okay, final video that I wanna talk about, and this is pretty heavy. It has to do with Palestinian kids in Israeli Defense Force, I guess the Israeli government, and you could speak a little bit more broadly, in their custody, Palestinian kids who are tortured and sexually abused. Again, like I've said, I would appreciate any donations to Patreon because this, just mentioning this is going to get me destroyed, not only because I'm discussing Palestinians, but also the fact that I'm discussing sexual assault because it is absolutely important, incredibly important, but yet I'm going to get punished as a result of this algorithm, or just leave a comment or whatever, something that promotes this in the algorithm, because I guarantee you might have had an idea that things like this have existed before, but you probably didn't know specifically, specific instances where this has happened. I want to talk about this. The news doesn't cover this. You get the point. I'm very passionate about trying to get this information out, which is why I create all the TikToks and stuff like that. So, uh, <laughs> it sounds like I'm on one right now. That's because I am. All right. So let me give you specific details. So this is according to the old UN report from July 4th, 2013. It's very hard to get evidence for these things, even though we know they widely occur, not only from an anecdotal standpoint of things that are reported in the media, but it's hard to get the UN to investigate this. If you're listening to this from the longer podcast, this UN report is the same report that I mentioned earlier about Palestinian kids being used as human shields. Now I'm going to quote this. It has to do with Palestinian children. Pal so Palestinian children are, quote, systematically subject to physical and verbal violence, humiliation, painful restraints, hooding of the head and face in a sack threatened with death, physical violence, and sexual assault against themselves or members of their family, restricted access to toilet, food, and water. These crimes are perpetrated from the time of arrest, during transfer and interrogation, to obtain a confession, but also on an arbitrary basis as testified by several Israeli soldiers, as well as during pretrial detention. Okay. First of all, <laughs> these walls are paper thin. There's probably everybody walking around wondering what the hell I'm even talking about right now. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm laughing about the, the people hearing, not about the topic. You get the point though. Now it's unclear how old these kids are. They could be old enough to walk. Could it be all the way up to 17 years old? We really don't know. We have no idea. And that's kind of an unfortunate aspect because you think that we would have a strong under, stronger understanding about this. But the point is that they've been, it's, it's a wide scale that happens in different aspects of custody. Okay, so the question is, how bad is this really? Well, I have more information for you. So these kids are taken from their parents in the middle of the night, sometimes for months at a time, and many in solitary confinement for the entire time. And I'm gonna get into how bad it is. I'm just gonna keep going with that, but just to stop for a second, that sounds pretty bad. Solitary confinement. The only place that I've ever seen to make the argument that solitary confinement isn't cruel and inhumane punishment if done for long periods of time was the United States government in 1985. The Department of Justice, if I remember correctly, had posted a quote unquote academic article that made the argument that it wasn't cruel or inhumane punishment. But yet the Israeli government does that for kids over the span of several months. That sounds particularly bad, especially could you imagine being a parent? Just side note, could you imagine being a parent, having your kid taken away for months, not knowing where they're at at all, and then being completely isolated? Say they're like 10, right? That's bad. Anyway, so moving forward, there is uh, acts of torture, obviously. These kids are also interrogated in Hebrew. That's an important part. So I was in Israel for three months, so I can guarantee you that a lot, most of the, the Palestinians and so on don't know Hebrew, right? They speak Arabic. So if they're interrogated in Hebrew and they're kids, how are they possibly going to know how to answer the questions? Now, on top of this too, they're forced to sign confessions in Hebrew in order to be released. They don't read Hebrew. They don't know what's being said. Lawyers also don't have access to Arabic. So if you have a Palestinian lawyer who doesn't really know Hebrew, then how are you going to help? Or if you're an Israeli who knows Hebrew, then to what extent are you considered to be reliable who might actually have their best interests at hand? You get the point here. Now let's talk about the extent to which this issue happens. Are we talking about this happened to five kids or one kid or three kids or two and a half kids? I, I don't know. So here's what it is. Specifically, this is according to Haaretz, which is an Israeli paper, believe it or not. Quote, 69 minors were allegedly beaten. Four minors were reportedly being sexually assaulted and 12 said they are threatened with sexual assault. <sighs> there's not, there's no details by the way. So if you're, if you're wondering any more specifics about the assaults, there's uh, no, whether it's Haaretz or whether it's the United Nations, they don't really go into like specific details other than it's assault. So if, don't come at me with the 
if you're skeptical, like, oh, define sexual assault or anything, listen, I'm not going to entertain those things right now. You can uh, do your own research and then let me know about that. Now, in addition to this, it's clearly bad enough because in 2011, 19 boys had attempted suicide. I'm going to butcher these names, but in Matin Detention Facility and in the Given Givon Detention Facility, I apologize, no disrespect to... Uh, People that speak Arabic or Hebrew with the names, I don't know, they're probably Hebrew, but uh, apologize for the pronunciation, but 19 boys attempted suicide. How bad do things have to get for 19 kids? Keep in mind, Israel and the Palestinian areas, not a very big area. 19. Attempted. Now, the last thing I'm going to leave off on with this is, look. Am I saying the Palestinian Authority on the opposite side? Am I saying that they're, they're amazing people and et cetera, et cetera? No, I'm not. Okay, I'm not. They've done a lot of bad things as well. But listen, if us as Americans, if we're focused on upholding thing, like important values, and we see things like this, how specifically are we going to go out and make the argument, hi, China, you can't do these things to the different Uyghur Muslims, which I'm probably going to be censored because I said that as well. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. This is just a matter of fact. And I've worked in media for a fair amount of time. Started the YouTube channel only a few years ago, but I worked in media for much longer than that. Almost a decade now. That's going to get censored. But we can't say, hi, that's cruel and inhumane. But yet we support the Israeli government doing all these different things. We pay them. Like I said in a previous video, or unless you're watching the whole podcast, we give them $3.8 billion in 2023. They use children as human shields, which I mentioned in video number one, unless you're watching the whole podcast. And then, then we, we, we see situations like this with the different assaults. The funny part about all of this, and I don't mean ha-ha funny, I mean funny is in a bit of an irony, is that would you like to know how much the American government has talked about this? Probably zero. You have all these different politicians also coming out. Oh, do things for the kids, anti-grooming, anti-all these other things, right? Great. What is your stance on Israel? Do you even know about this? I bet they probably don't even know about this. They being congressmen and women, just by example, senators. A lot of times, and I've worked with them before, I can tell you they probably don't know about this. So what is the point of everything that I'm discussing? Look, we have a responsibility as Americans we have to understand who are we giving money to and who are we supporting. We are getting into an increasingly volatile state, not only within the US, but internationally. We got to keep ourselves in check or else someone is going to do it. That is why all of this is important, let alone the, the, the historical legacy aspect of all of this, let alone everything else, the humanitarian aspect about it. You get the point, okay? You all understand. So please, for God's sake, can we start talking about real conversations and stop all of this superficial shit about whatever is happening with the Kardashians? I don't care. I don't care. You and I do care about though? I care about these kids. I care about the amount of money we're spending on offensive weapons that is going to push us farther into wars that we have absolutely no business or no interest to actually be in. And I think everybody should start to care a little bit more about that as well.